Today I'll be showing you guys how to install an Apexi Neo on a 1994 Mazda MX-6. The Apexi Neo is a device that uh, intercepts the signal from your airflow sensor um, and changes the uh, value on that reading before it gets to the ECU um, so that uh, you can change the amount of air the ECU sees and effectively change the amount of fuel that goes into the engine. You can create maps through it using the RPMs and the throttle position sensor and uh, the Apexi Neo has 16 programmable points of where you can adjust the fuel in percentages. The Apexi Neo has all these really really tiny wires like they have to be like 30 gauge or something like that. They're really small. So what I ended up doing was cutting little chunks of bigger wire, um, separating the, the wire core on the inside folding the uh, Apexi Neo wires in there and twisting around to put it in there just so that these butt splices uh, had something to hold on to and then what's cool about them being heat shrink and having the glue in there is that it's actually uh, holding the wires so they don't pull out as easily but I'm gonna have to tape all this up because I don't trust those little tiny wires they might snap but it's all wired into the handy dandy little plug here um, and we're ready to plug it into the car now so the uh, Apexi Neo has to be wired into the ECU harness so to start that, you're going to need to remove uh, this trim panel right here. Take the shift knob, and you can just unscrew that. So this works best with the car in fourth gear, uh, just because of how it has to come up. So go ahead and put it in fourth gear, and then you can work on using a screwdriver, or in my case, you can actually just use your hands. This one's a little bit loose. And you can just work on popping this off. It's just some clips. And with that nice and loose, you can start to remove the uh, plugs that go behind there. The three plugs behind here are uh, two little lights and one plug that goes to the cigarette lighter. And with that out, you should be able to just remove your entire uh, um, thing there and you'll be able to see your ECU harness. So here's a close-up on the plugs. Uh, this one goes to the um, cigarette lighter and then there are two lights. And that's pretty much... Uh, that's what holds it in besides the uh, the clips themselves which clip in here, here, and there, there. This tangled mess of wires you see is a uh, OBD1 to OBD2 uh, conversion harness um, and a Mazda Millennia ECU swap. Uh, so my car is originally OBD1, it's a 94, and this is a uh, conversion harness made by uh, Scott DeGrellis. Um, you can buy them from him, they're very useful. I do recommend a MAF swap. Uh, it's been dyno proven to give horsepower gains and uh, a lot better drivability, but for my setup, I am not going to be using that with my turbo. Um, but basically, that's this piece to this piece. If you're in just an OBD1 car, you'll just have this connecting right into your ECU. So I'm going to be converting back to my uh, stock ECU um, for this journey. Um, but these yellow plugs are the ones that plug into your stock ECU and this is actually a section just like this portion from a stock um, OBD-1 ECU so that uh, these plugs are going to be exactly the same and these are the wires that I'm going to have to access. The reason I'm converting back to a stock ECU is because I cannot use the uh, Apexi Neo on the Mazda Millennia MAF swap because the MAF is uh, 0 to 10 volts or 0 to 12 volts, something like that, and the uh, Apexi Neo needs a 0 to 5 volt airflow meter. Fortunately, the, uh, the VAF, the volume airflow, on the OBD-1 and actually all Mazda MX-6s, the VAF sensor is 0 to 5 volts and will work with the Apexi Neo. Um, the, again, the only problem is that it will not work at wide open throttle as our ECU goes into uh, open loop mode um, and ignores uh, sensor input. Uh, but it will work at idle and at cruise uh, so you can adjust for bigger injectors. And then I'm going to be using a using an FMU um, on under boost. So with all these unattached I'm able to access the wires a little bit more. Now comes the scary part of picking out which wires to do what and uh, where to cut them. Um, this is actually really scary for me because uh, this is your factory harness. If you can find or make some kind of a uh, 
connector that basically extends the harness, you know, something for this to plug into, a little bit of wire, and then three more of these plugs to plug into the ECU, that's best. Um, they sell them for other cars, but they don't tend to sell them for our car. Um, but I'm going to be doing this uh, with the best methods I can, and hopefully we will not have any problems whatsoever. Um, I'm actually going to be keeping this Millennia MAF swap until I get my Apexi Neo, um, which then I'll film the beginning of this that you guys have already watched at this point. Um, but So I will plug everything back in um, at the end of this segment to prove that my wiring uh, will still run the ECU without the SAFC in there at all. So I've done a lot of research on uh, diagrams on uh, which wire is which and such. I even called Apexi, they're very helpful. They didn't have the diagram for um, the MX-6, but uh, they were able to help me with some questions I had. So I've, I've wired it, I've uh, narrowed it down to the uh, far left connector, the one with the 26 pins. Um, the second one from the top, 12 pins over, is... Uh, is the uh, that's the ground. Um, I will post a diagram at the end of this video for anybody uh, who's interested in doing them that themselves. But this it needs to be uh, an inch apart and as close to the harness as you feel comfortable. But you're going to need two wires coming out of this one an inch apart because the Neo has two grounds. Um, so you're going to cut this, and I'll show you guys how I'm doing that. Thank you for calling. Please dial it now. Um, hi, I had a question about your uh, Apexi Neo. Um, for the ground, is is there two wires that go to that, and you're supposed to put them an inch apart? Um, yeah, for, like, if I'm wiring in an Apexi, uh, Neo to my car, for the ground wire on the unit, it's, it has two wires about an inch apart, right? Yeah, you got black and brown and brown, closest to the ECU. Okay. And then you got to put a power wire to the red, and then the red with the white, the red one closer to the ECU. Okay. All right, um, and, it, and that's in the, in the, uh, manual, correct? Right. Huh? All right, thank you. Before you start any wiring, you're going to want to make sure that your battery is disconnected. No power in the system at all. Don't want to fry any ECU. Okay, here's the scary part. I'm going to cut the first wire. Okay, just double checking that's the correct one. Here we go. Ooh, that was scary. Okay, that is the uh, black wire with the red stripe. That is your... Uh, ECU ground. I am using heat shrink uh, butt splice connectors on everything. It's like a normal butt splice connector, but the ends are actually heat shrink tubing um, lined with a uh, lined with an adhesive. Um, so when they heat up, not only does the tube shrink, but it also secretes like a glue that completely seals it to everything. I I love using these things, but I'm using those on absolutely everything. I like to give it a little squeeze just to make sure that the glue is nice and connected. And that actually forms a really nice seal that uh, hugs the wire really nicely. Um, it's clear and all that section on either side of the wire is solid hard glue now. It's even squished out the end a little bit. And then inside is that uh, metal on metal contact where you want. Here's another look at the heat shrink butt splice connectors. Um, they seal, you can sort of see a little bit some glue popping out the end there and uh, that's nice and hard and nice and connected. So this is what I've uh, done as part of my pre-wiring. The wire comes uh, 
I guess, out of the car, up through here, and into the thing, just like normal. But I've added, and these wires actually attach here and here, about an inch apart, these two wire send-offs that are going to attach to two separate wires on the uh, Apexi uh, Neo. Um, and since this is part of my pre-wiring, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and label these two um, with some tape. And uh, But basically, this is what you're going to have to do on the power and the ground wire for the ECU, um, is give it two little things there, so it's like an X thing almost. Um, heat, heat shrink butt splice connectors with adhesive. Um, good connection all the way through there. So on the uh, throttle position sensor wire, which is the middle connector, um, number 14, which is the second from the right, so it's the second one in on this side. Um, it's the pink wire with the blue stripe. Um, I have just cut it, butt splice connector, and extension back to the wire basically because you can't just cut it and crimp it back in because then it will be shorter than original so I basically cut it there added a segue in between and then uh, wired in this and this is going to go to the the Neo for your throttle position sensor. Part way, so part way through I started getting uh, more creative um, making less work for myself and instead of doing this all in the car I decided I would just cut the wire strip it on either end from the car itself and I would build these little things uh, it's basically like a wire interceptor wiretap thing um, and that way I don't have to do any hard work really inside that tight space I can just stick it in the end crimp it, heat shrink it, crimp it, heat shrink it and we're ready to go so now I have done the uh, the VAF wire, the air meter volume airflow sensor wire um, that is the solid red wire on the middle connector. One correction, um, I just realized that I made the wrong thing. Um, on the wire for the VAF, you're not just tapping it, you are intercepting it. So instead of it going all the way through, you're going to cut it, and I'm going to put a um, male on one end and a female on the other just so I can plug it in right now. So now I've got the uh, male and the female ends on this plug, um, nice and heat shrinked on there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug those in and then plug the rest of these harnesses in. I have tapped the uh, wire for the RPM signal. It is on the uh, far right connector, um, number 8. It is the uh, yellow wire with the black line on it. Uh, now the only thing left to tap is going to be the ECU power wire. So this is basically the little harness connector tap thing I made for the ground. Um, I made this one outside of the wiring harness itself so I could show you guys uh, and make it easier for myself. This is the power one. Um, the power wire you know, usually goes straight through but I'm going to cut it and cut it and splice them together through this and then it gives me these two uh, um, powers for the Apexi Neo um, that are about an inch apart. I have installed the uh, final um, wire, which is the power wire, and it goes to the red wire with the black stripe on the, um, the, the plug all the way furthest to the right. So you can see the little, all the little wires that I've added. All these big red ones are new. Um, each one of these is coming off. I have them each labeled. Uh, the RPM, the ground, the power the throttle position sensor and the airflow sensor wires are all going to go into the um, Apexi Neo uh, once it arrives. But uh, right now I'm going to plug this all back in and um, it should run just like the ECU just like it did before. But we're just going to plug it in make sure I didn't mess anything up. Alright so uh, this is everything back in. Everything's still connected. I just label all the spots. Um, the next thing I'm going to show you guys after the start attempt is uh, probably going to be plugging it back in with the stock ECU because uh, I'm going to be getting rid of my math swap and going back to OEM. Um, but we're going to turn on the battery and uh, hopefully turn on the car. Okay, battery is on. 
out of gear. Key in the ignition. Fingers crossed. Awesome. Making sure nothing's on fire. Scott Bassinger would like that too much. Um, yeah, so okay. Now, uh, next week when my um, Pexi Neo comes in, uh, I'll uh, finish up this video and then once I do some testing and prove that it works the way I want it to, I'll uh, post it up for y'all. Instead of wiring um, each one of these little wires from my ECU into the Pexi Neo directly, I decided to make it on a little plug so I could unplug it and uh, plug it back in. If you get a new Apex Neo, they do come with a little wiring harness plug. Um, I just bought one from a local computer store near mine that was actually closing. Um, I only needed about eight wires, but they had this uh, 20 wire extension harness for $4. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, I'm going to cut it right there, uh, plug these two ends in together and use uh, eight or ten of the wires or however many and just wire them into the ECU. That way I'll have everything on a plug, so if I go to a sketchy neighborhood, I can just unplug it and take my Apexi Neo with me uh, to prevent some theft. I now have eight ends um, ready to be plugged into uh, those harnesses that I prepared beforehand. If I would have known I was going to buy this harness to begin with, um, I would have just wired these directly into the, uh, the harness there instead of wasting two butt splice connectors on each one of these connections. Here you can see I have wired in all of the uh, connections and made note of which wire colors they go to. I've got my two reds um, as the power, two blacks are the ground, um, and the order on the thing for me goes um, closest to the ECU, farther from the ECU, then power closest to the ECU, uh, farthest from the ECU. Then I've got the two orange wires are the VAF sensors, so I've got uh, closer to the ECU, farther from the ECU. Then um, the yellow I have as the TPS, the throttle position sensor, and I have one uh, one yellow and one green. And so one of the greens is the RPM. Um, I've only used the top row of these, so I've got 10 extra wires. I can use them for other things or whatever. I'm leaving the TPS, I mean, the, I'm leaving the two VAF signals uh, unplugged right now. They're going to be plugged into each other um, because the guy who's supposed to be sending me my Apexi Neo did not send it out yet, and he said he did a week ago, but he just asked me for my address today, so um, I don't think there's any way that he sent that already. Uh, but that'll probably be in next week, so I'm still going to have to drive in the car as is. Um, this will give me some peace of mind, though, because I know none of the wires will be able to be short-circuiting, because they'll all be separated in their little channels. Um, but that's everything wired into a plug. And then I'm going to attach this end to the Apexi Neo, and then I'll be able to plug it in and unplug it as I please. Here's just another checkpoint, make sure that the engine still works. That's going to be cleaned up with a bunch of zip ties, but uh, nothing's on fire. Idle's bouncing like usual, but now we have a plug to plug in the Apexi Neo. Right now I have the uh, OEM ECU back in and uh, all these wires plugged in. It's not as much of a mess as I had thought. Um, I sort of taped things up and got things wired in. Basically there's the plug. I added hot glue on either end uh, just to stop it, stop the wires from being underneath so much uh, you know, tension. You know, if they get pulled, not, it won't pull them out. Um, this end's ready to go for the Apexi Neo, which uh, has arrived in Jacksonville. And so it should be here tomorrow, maybe even today, hoping for today. But basically that's going to plug right in there. I'm going to split up these two wires. I just got them crimped together so the car will run. And um, then we'll have the plug and play Apexi Neo. I have put my uh, volume airflow sensor, the VAF, back in front of the uh, turbo. So I've got the Apexi Neo all wired in. Um, and here goes the first power on, hopefully. Okay, that's promising. Okay. 
pretty awesome. Um, while it's plugged in, I'm gonna mess around with the settings for a little bit and then uh, show you guys it working. Well, this is my air map. Um, I don't have the high throttle tuned to anything, really, um, until it gets above a certain point, uh, because this does ignore the, um, it, it goes to open loop mode at wide open throttle and will ignore this Neo. Any inputs you give it won't change anything up there. Uh, once it hits max uh, deflection on the VAF, once the plunger goes all the way in, um, but I've got it to, for 310cc injectors, and this is, it runs at 14.7 all the way through the, uh, through the, the usual driving range, um, as long as you don't go wide open throttle with it. Uh, I've got my gas mileage back, it used to be 15 miles per gallon, now I get an average of 26 again. Um, at 500 I'm at negative 10, at 1000 I'm at negative 7, 1500 RPMs I'm at negative 5, same with 2. 1,000, uh, 2,500, I'm at negative 37. Uh, 3,000, I'm at negative 37. That's where I usually drive around. 4,000, I'm at negative 27. 5,000, I'm at zero because usually by the time I hit uh, 5K, uh, I'd either want it to be rich or um, I'd be at wide open throttle at that point. And then just up here, um, I am using an uh, FMU, 12 to 1 FMU uh, for under boost. Um, and just as a safety precaution uh, for high throttle from 3k to 5k, um, I am using plus 10 fuel just so it'll be rich if it decides to read the Neo for a second there. Um, the Apexi Neo has 16 program programmable points. I'm uh, not using all of those, but um, I'd just like to show you guys that and about how I do run stoichiometric uh, all the way through the drivable driving range, uh, which that alone has made this Apexi Neo worth getting. Uh, it's got me and my gas mileage back from 14 to 26. Um, the FMU controls it under turbo. Um, and this is a, not a replacement for you know, Mega Squirt standalone ECU, but uh, this is what I'm going to do for right now until I save up for a full standalone that I can tune. This car has not been started in about a week, so this is an extremely cold start um, using the Neo. to see but that's at 14 air flow ratio at cruise. This has been how to install an Apexi uh, AFC Neo on a 1994 Mazda MX-6. Um, again, this will not work at wide open throttle, but as far as controlling uh, bigger injectors throughout your usual driving range, this does work excellent um, from my testing. Uh, this gets rid of one of the main drawbacks from using an FMU, um, which is that you get terrible gas mileage from uh, having to run the bigger injectors with no way to control them. Um, so with this controlling the injectors down low and the uh, FMU controlling the injectors up top, I am able to uh, get a 14.7 air fuel ratio throughout all of my daily driving and uh, when I hit boost, uh, the air fuel ratio drops to a cool 10.2, um, which it holds all the way to red line. Uh, I'm at 4 PSI, I've also run this at 8 PSI, and it uh, it still holds the same. Uh, my clutch just doesn't hold 8 PSI right now. 
but um, the Apexi Neo and um, 12 to 1 FMU with 310 uh, Millennia S injectors. Uh, this is me proving that it works. Thanks for watching.